Whether you're visiting Portugal for the first time or either if you're moving to your country, there are a couple things in this nation that may actually shock you. Let's get into them. Hi guys, this is Mariano and welcome to my channel. So basically, before moving to the Lisbon area, I made some research so I could expect some things that I would find when moving to the country. But I have to say that after moving here, there were a couple things that I didn't expect and surprised me both in a positive and a negative way. These are the ones that I encountered. So the first thing I have to say is the food. People know that in Portugal they're famous for the 200 ways they have for cooking bacalao or the fabulous pistache de nata, but something surprised me, especially the variety they had of fruits, vegetables, and dairy products, especially for example, on the dairy side, they have cheese from the Azores, and there are many wines and different selections of things that are very impressive. Also, coming from Argentina, the country of meat, especially beef, I have to say that Portuguese meat quality is pretty good, even surprisingly good, I'd say. Another thing to know is that people here love using garlic. The Portuguese use garlic mainly on every dish. So this could be a total hit or miss depending on your liking. To be honest, I didn't like garlic that much before moving to Portugal and now kind of got used to it, but I still avoid the dishes with too much garlic. It's fun because if you walk around your neighborhood around 8 p.m., I assure you, you would scent the smell of garlic. So the second thing I would say is the graffiti. This one is definitely a negative one and it's found everywhere, basically in Lisbon and Porto. Of course, if you go to the main touristy areas and the main avenues or square, they're mostly clean of graffitis. But if you walk just a couple blocks inside, you will probably find some graffitis. And I would say this is something that really upsets me. And I know many tourists also think the same too, especially because cities like Lisbon and Porto are truly beautiful. So the graffitis kind of ruin the facades of the building. You have to know that this graffiti is not something like uh, street art that you will find like, you know, like a mural or a beautiful thing, but instead it's more like a tagging or a, some obscene drawing so that it doesn't have any purpose. I really hope the mayors in Lisbon and Porto start working on this because come on, it cannot be that hard to solve. Like the third thing I would want to say is the weather. People know Portugal has amazing weather. That's totally true. I love it here. But you have to know that both the sun and the wind here are much stronger than probably what you expect. Especially in big cities like Lisbon that has an abundance of pastel color buildings and the famous Calçada Portuguesa, which is basically a white stone. The sun gets reflected there and creates a brightness exposure called the Luz of Lisboa. That's locals call it here and basically that intensifies the brightness of the sun so it's better for you to wear some sunnings to avoid all the light in your face. Now on the wind side Portugal gets a lot of wind from the Atlantic and that can be felt not only in the coastal areas but also inland so it's another good reason to bring some sunglasses here. Now a fourth thing that actually shocked me here in Portugal unfortunately on a negative way is actually the lack of accessibility in places like Lisbon Metro or some train station. I was pretty shocked to find out that some stations didn't have an elevator or an escalator. I mean, I get it, it's totally healthier to go through the stairs and that's fine for healthy people, but if you're someone elderly or with a mobility issue, this is something that simply may not be an option for you. Now, I have to clarify before moving on that many stations do have escalators and elevator. I would even bet it's the majority but it's still a matter of luck. Some stations that you may be getting out doesn't have one. Now, the fifth thing that I would mention is the cars. This may not be applicable to you, especially if you come from a very affluent area or a wealthy city around the world. But in my case, I was coming from Buenos Aires, Argentina. So when I moved to Lisbon, I was actually pretty shocked to find out how many amazing cars are everywhere here. And then talking about the typical European brands that you find in most cities like BMW, Mercedes or Audi, I'm talking about more luxurious and higher-end cars like Porsche, Range Rover, or even Teslas. I remember having family members visiting me here in Lisbon, and they were joking around saying, hey, is there an offer here? Are there discounts for 241? Because there were just so many out here. 
Also, I remember going to cities like Barcelona or Madrid and thinking, hey, the cars in Lisbon are actually much nicer than here. I was also surprised to see how many charging stations are available. To give you an example, in my neighborhood, in just a 10 block radius, you have two charging stations. On to the sixth place, I have to say another thing that struck me here is the safety and the peace of mind that you get in Portugal. You probably read this country is one of the safest in Europe and although there is crime, there is very little, uh, the kind of sense of security you get and the peace of mind and the tranquility you can see it's very family oriented and people here live very quietly it's something that totally surprised me especially for a capital city like Lisbon it's kind of goes in line with the liberal culture of really Portugal but still the sense of security on a such high level it's something that I didn't found neither near in Spain or places like France or the UK shock number seven the real estate you probably know how crazy the market has been, especially in big cities like Lisbon or Porto or even in regions like the Algarve. But still, it's surprising to see how much prices have climbed from one year to another. For example, a two-bed apartment in central Lisbon that in 2023 was going to rent for 1,200 euros, now in 2023 would average over 2,000 euros per month. To buy here, according to the site Idealista, the average square meter price in Lisbon is 5,301 euros. That means that to buy a 100 meter apartment, you would need to pay over 530,000 euros. This is much more than other cities like Madrid that have an average square meter price of 3,979 euros. That basically means that a 100 meter apartment in Madrid is around 379,000 euros. That's almost 140,000 euros more to buy in Lisbon than in Madrid. Now the last shock, and definitely a positive one, is the growth that you will find here in Portugal. Like people move to Portugal assuming that they will find a poor country, especially when compared to Western Europe standards, but they don't realize the vast amount of private investments, entrepreneurs, shops, restaurants, and places opening on a daily basis. Even according to Eurostats, Portugal was the third largest economy in the EU area to be growing in early 2023, only after Poland and Luxembourg. And you can sense that when you're walking around Lisbon, there's business incubators, there's people coming in, investing, opening places, and it's really exciting because you can see that the country is actually growing. So there you have it guys, those were eight culture shocks that I found when moving to Portugal. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and make a comment, let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.